Hello guys, yes, Shuli and you are welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make perfect bread. If you are a beginner in making bread, then watch my video very carefully. I have explained so many tips and tricks in this video for making a perfect bread, such as how the dough ferments very perfectly, what happens if vinegar is added or not added, what is the correct volume of fermentation before baking, how to bake a bread without oven in our kadhai or pan, in gas or G coil heater, how to bring same color on the bread from upper side and lower side just like an oven, how to cut your bread perfectly that it doesn't break and so many tips and tricks. So guys watch my video carefully and don't miss a tip. So let's see the recipe. So guys at first we need to heat some water. So I have put a vessel on heater and turn the heat on on the medium heat and here's the cup of half cup measurement. So I'm going to measure water with this cup. This is half cup of water adding it and now I'm going to add half of the half cup of water. That means 3 fourth cup of water I'm adding. I'm going to use 2 cup of plain flour. So for 2 cup of flour I am adding 3 fourth cup of water. This is the dot measurement of water. Don't heat more water than this. You may use milk instead of water. So now we need to add some salt and sugar. So for 2 cup of flour I am going to add 1 teaspoon of salt. This is the perfect ratio for flour and salt. You can see the level of the spoon. This is 1 teaspoon of salt. And now I am going to add sugar. For 2 cups of flour we need 2 tablespoons of sugar. So this is the spoon of tablespoon, 1 tablespoon as you can notice. So now I am adding 2 tablespoons of sugar. It is white sugar, you may use brown sugar instead, there is no problem. So I have added 2 tablespoons of sugar. And now we need to stir the mixture very nicely until the salt and sugar dissolve well in water. The sugar and salt are dissolved very well in water. So now I am removing the vessel and now we need to keep it aside until the water is warm. It's very hot now so I am keeping it aside and now we need to measure some flour, plain flour that is called all purpose flour also. So here is my cup, the cup of one cup measurement. So I am taking one cup of plain flour and now another cup of plain flour. That means all purpose flour. That means I have taken 2 cups of all purpose flour for this recipe. We need to take some more flour for dusting, some more dry flour. So I am taking this for extra dusting if needed. I am keeping it aside also. This is the main quantity of flour that we need for making our bread. And this is some extra flour for dusting if needed. And in the meantime the water is warm now. So now we need to add some vinegar, white vinegar I am adding 9% vinegar. So I am taking 1 tablespoon of vinegar and adding into the water. I added the vinegar into the water and now we need to add yeast. So I am taking 1 teaspoon of yeast at first and now half teaspoon of yeast again. That means 1 and a half teaspoon of yeast I am taking for 2 cups of flour. We need to mix very nicely with the spoon and rest it for about 5 to 10 minutes with a cover. So I am keeping it aside. And after about 10 minutes, this is the texture of our water. Now we need to make the dough. After stirring a little, I am adding all the flour, I mean the 2 cups of flour in the water mixture. All the 2 cups of flour at a time. And now we need to mix everything nicely with the help of the spoon. And after it is mixed roughly, we need to use our hand to knead the dough. If the dough is tight, we need to add some more water. I think about 1 to 2 tablespoons of water I will need for making the dough perfect. So now I am removing the spoon and using my hand to knead the dough. 
and I'm taking some oil here you can see it's refined vegetable oil and there is no perfect quantity for this I'm going to use oil little by little as needed so now let's knead our dough I think it's very hard now so I'm using some more water about two tablespoons of water I'm adding and now I'm going to knead it again just like the dough of roti or chapati we make and you can notice that the dough is very sticky so now we need to add some oil little by little and knead the dough very well don't add too much oil at a time add very small quantity of oil at a time and knead the dough we have to continue the kneading process until the dough is very smooth in texture you can notice that I am adding oil gradually and kneading the dough very nicely. For easiness of kneading the dough, I am taking a plate for kneading. Here is the plate. I am brushing some oil in it and now I am going to knead the dough in the plate. And I am taking this dough also with the help of some dry flour like this. and now I am kneading it again until the dough is very smooth in texture it will take about 5 to 6 minutes literally to knead the dough and you can see that our dough is ready it's very smooth in texture so now we need to keep it for fermentation I'm going to take the dough with the help of my both hands, greasing some oil on my palms. And this is the vessel that I'm going to use for fermentation. So I'm greasing some oil in it. It's ready. We need to take the dough like this. Actually, we need to smoothen the upper part of the dough like this. So, it's done. I am going to keep it in the vessel for fermentation. It's done. Now, we need to cover the vessel. You may use a plastic wrap for this, but I don't have it, so I am using my plate greasing some oil in the plate and covering the dough with it now i'm going to show the oil that some quantity of oil is left you can see it about uh, one fourth cup of oil i used for the dough and this is the rest so let's keep it aside and now we need to cover the plate with a cloth a thick cloth i have taken a folded bed sheet and covered the plate with it and now we need to keep the vessel in the sun for a faster process of fermentation so let's do it and you can see that i have kept it in the sun here it is by this process the fermentation process will be faster and within two hours we'll get the fermented dough so after about one hour this is the texture of the dough it is about double but it is not perfect we need to leave it for another one hour for a perfectly fermented dough if you keep the dough inside your house for fermentation it will take a longer time so until the dough is fermented perfectly don't bake it so now i'm going to leave it again for another one hour in the sun covering the vessel like before and after about another one hour our dough is fermented very nicely this is the texture of the dough it's very perfectly fermented and now we need to bake it so we need to take the dough out of the vessel and knead the dough for another two minutes i'm using this plate again and taking this quantity of dough also because i don't like to waste anything so now i'm going to knead it again for another two minutes with my hand of course 
it's very soft and smooth now so now we need to mold it for molding I'm dusting some plain flour dry flour and spreading the dough like this at first I'm making it round and now I'm going to spread it like this now we need to roll it just like the shape of the mold we need to do it like I'm showing you you may use a rolling pin for this but it's not so necessary my hands are enough for this so my dough is rolled nicely now I'm showing you the mold my mold is of 7 inch and 3 and 3 inch that means it's 7 inches and here is 3 and 3 inch so for 7 inch mold I'm taking 2 cups of flour if your mold is bigger than this I mean your mold is of 8 inch you need to make a dough of 2 and a half cup of flour I made the dough of 2 cups of flour for 7 inches mold so this is perfect now we need to add the dough in the mold I didn't grease any oil in the mold but you may do it it will be better so now I'm adding the dough in the mold and setting the dough inside with my hand like this now we need to cover the mold and raise the dough for about 10 to 15 minutes so I'm covering the mold and leaving it for 10 to 15 minutes after about 15 minutes this is the volume of the dough and it's okay we don't need to rise it so much now it's okay for baking now and I need to bake it without oven so I'm taking a pan I'm taking a heavy bottom pan for baking and I'm putting a stand in it and now I'm putting the mold on it now we need to cover the pan before covering the pan we need to cover the mold first so I'm greasing some oil inside the cover the cover of the mold it will be easy to remove the cover while checking so I greased some oil you may grease some oil inside the bread mold too but I didn't do it so now I am going to cover the mold and cover the pan I am going to bake the bread on G coil heater so I turned the heater on on medium heat you can see that the outer two coils are red now that means it's on medium heat if you are going to bake it on gas you need to keep the flame on medium high so now I have put the pan on heater and now we need to bake the bread for 30 minutes dot 30 minutes don't change the heat and don't uncover the pan before 30 minutes we need to check the bread for the first time after 30 minutes of baking not before that so after 30 minutes I am uncovering the pan and now I am not going to check the bread I am just going to remove the mold directly out of the pan because I know that my bread is baked very nicely so now we need to uncover it and it's very nicely baked it's very light color but that's not the problem I like this light color actually we need to cool down the bread fully before demolding but I don't have so much patience so I'm doing it hot I'm removing the edges with the help of a knife and now I'm going to demold it in this plate it's very hot so I'm using this cloth and our bread is here you may see the color of the bread it's very nicely perfect it's very soft and perfectly baked so guys now we need to cut the bread 
but before cutting we need to cool it down fully otherwise it will break so I need to have this patience I'm putting the bread in the mold again and covering the bread with a wet cloth actually my cloth is not wet but after covering I'm going to sprinkle some water on it so it will be wet then this process will make the bread softer so now the bread is cooled down fully and now I'm going to cut the bread so guys I'm going to use my regular knife the bread cutting knife is something different but I don't have it so I'm using it so guys this is the inside of the bread you can notice the air pockets in it it's very perfectly fluffy and very soft and it's very nicely baked also so guys if you are going to follow my all tips and tricks your bread will be perfect in the first time so if you are a beginner follow my recipe for your first bread and you will never fail it's my guarantee so guys try my recipe for your first bread and don't forget to share your experience with me hit the like button guys if you really liked the video and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching hope to meet you in the next video bye bye take care